Good morning, everyone. Today, we're honoring the Jesuit martyrs in our early country history, St. Isaac Jogues, John Brebeuf, and others. And since we're remembering them, let's keep in mind those 17 in Haiti from another group, missionaries, including children. They may be safe. How are you at waiting? I'm going to talk about waiting in the scriptures and the homily. So let us begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. As we gather then in praise and adoration, we're mindful of our faults and failings and celebrate the healing and forgiveness of Christ through his most precious blood. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for all your people. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who chose to manifest the blessed hope of your eternal kingdom by the toil of Saints John de Berbeuf, Isaac Jogues, and their companions, and by the shedding of their blood, graciously grant that through their intercession the faith of Christians may be strengthened day by day through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Be seated now and listen to the word of God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, through one man, sin entered the world, and through sin, death, and thus death came to all men, inasmuch as all sinned. If by that one person's transgression the many died, how much more did the grace of God and the gracious gift of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow for the many? For if by the transgression of the one, death came to reign through that one, how much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and the gift of justification come to reign in life through the one, Jesus Christ. In conclusion, just as through one transgression, condemnation came to all, so through one righteous act, acquittal and life came to all. For just as through the disobedience of one man, the, men, the many were made sinners, so through the obedience of the one, the many will be righteous. Where sin increased, grace overflowed all the more, so that as sin reigned in death, grace also might reign through justification for eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The word of the Lord. A 
Our response is Psalm 40. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. Sacrifice or oblation you wished not, but ears open to obedience you gave me. Burnt offerings or sin offerings you sought not. Then said I, Behold, I come. In the written scroll it is prescribed for me. To do your will, O my God, is my delight, and your law is within my heart. I announce your justice in the vast assembly. I did not restrain my lips, as you, O Lord, know. May all who seek you exult and be glad in you. And may those who love your salvation say ever, The Lord be glorified. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, gird your loins, light your lamps, and be like servants who await their master's return from a wedding, ready to open immediately when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds vigilant on his arrival. Amen, I say to you, he will gird himself and have them recline at table and proceed to wait on them. And should he come in the second or third watch and find them prepared in this way, blessed are those servants. The Gospel of the Lord. How are you at waiting? If we think of that letter to the Romans that Father Andy's been working on, it was written probably in the year 56, 58, somewhere in there. So 20, 30 years after Jesus left, it's already in Rome, the faith. And so Paul, as he travels, is looking forward to getting to Rome, and he sends this letter ahead of him uh, to prepare the people and encourage them. Because 20 or 30 years after Jesus left, some of the people who knew Jesus personally are gone, and the people are living now on faith, living on what they've heard about Jesus. And so in that portion of Paul's letter, we, he emphasizes the idea of faith. He emphasizes how do we respond to sin that Jesus has already responded to with his grace. Huh? Where sin abounds, grace abounds even more. But Paul was surprised. <laughs> he had to, from where he was on his trip, he had to go back to Jerusalem for something and got caught up and was arrested and appealed to Caesar as a Roman citizen, but then he had to go to Rome as a prisoner. He had planned to go freely, but now 
he has no choice. When he gets there, he's put under house arrest. People can come to visit him, but he can't go anywhere. And he continues his work, but it's a different procedure for him. And so the gospel about being ready and waiting for the master, that's what these people are doing. Jesus said he would return. And the early Christians after Jesus are thinking, when? When's he gonna come back, huh? How soon? One of, the one of the Gospels, I think it was Matthew's Gospel, was kind of written to the people who were kind of waiting. Huh? They weren't doing much. There's no ascension in Matthew's Gospel. People have to keep on actively preparing, actively waiting. Huh? Can't just sit there. 2,000 years later, we are still waiting. How would Paul encourage us? How would he challenge our faith today? In light with all that's going on in the world, the violence, uh, the illnesses, the struggles we have. How do we, believing in Christ, respond to what's going on? Unfortunately, there are Christians who are fighting each other, challenging each other. We simply need to make Christ present now, not in the future. He's present in every one of us. He's present in the Eucharist and the scriptures. How do we respond to him as we meet him today? You'll meet him in other ways today, wherever you go. How are you going to bring the, the Beatitudes? How are you going to bring the forgiveness? How are you going to bring the praise of God into the world you touch? We ask the Spirit then to strengthen us, enlighten us as he did those early Christians in Rome, and help us today to make Jesus present wherever we are. Let us pray. The missionaries in Haiti, they may not be Catholics, but they're trying to live out what Jesus has asked of them. For their safety and well-being, we pray to the Lord. For healing, of the epidemic, the virus, for those suffering and for the medical people serving, we pray to the Lord. For world leaders, they may seek peace and justice, we pray to the Lord. For the Mass intention today is for Catherine Sweeney, and for those who offer it, we pray to the Lord. And for all your intentions, the intentions of the people at home, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear. O most loving and gracious God, we lift up all of these prayers and intentions to you through Christ our Lord. O God, we earnestly ask you to bless our diocese, the many priests, brothers, sisters, and deacons who will love you with their whole mind and heart and gladly spend their entire lives serving your church and making you known and loved. Bless our families, bless our children, and choose from our homes those needed for your work. Mary, Queen of the clergy, pray for us. Pray for our priests, religious, and deacons. Obtain for us many more. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, work of human hands, who will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. And with humble spirit and contrite heart, May we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in this, your sight be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me of all my sins. And so now, my friends, let us stand and pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice in our hands for the praise and the glory of God's name. For our good and the good of all God's holy church. As we venerate the passion of your martyrs, grant that through this sacrifice, O Lord, we may proclaim worthily the death of your only begotten Son, who, not content with encouraging the martyrs by word, strengthened their life, then likewise by example, for he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you are glorified when your saints are praised. Their very sufferings are but wonders of your might. In your mercy, you give ardor to their faith. To their endurance, you grant firm resolve and in their struggles, the victory is yours through Christ our Lord. And therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we, with all the host of angels, cry out, and without end, we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection 
until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, James our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. And have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And so now at our Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the risen Christ be with you now and always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul, since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you, amen.
Let us pray. Having fed upon heavenly delights, we humbly ask you, O Lord, that by the example of our blessed martyrs, we may bear in our hearts the marks of your Son's charity and suffering, and ever enjoy the fruit of perpetual peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless us all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Eucharistic celebration here is ended. Go in peace. Thanks. Thanks. Have a good day.